blessings before this wonderful message from my father in the lord late archbishop bensi idaosa i'd like to share information about anointedtube.com with you the number one christian video sharing website today anointedtube.com this is a powerful site believed to be the top most Christian video sharing website in the world today. It is ranked as one of the best video sharing website according to available data. It hosts videos of preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from all around the world. You can as well share our video on all social media platforms. The World Database of Christian Precious, positively touching and changing lives around the world. It is a great Christian video sharing website. The Lord bless you. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. certain men to break old barriers, fulfill ancient prophecies, champion new ideals, forage into new frontiers and herald new horizons. There was a man sent from God. His name is Archbishop Benson Itahosa. Sarah laughed in unbelief at what the angels said. Zechariah doubted the angels also. So did Thomas doubt that Jesus had risen from the dead. Signs, wonders, and miracles. What really are they? Miracle is the divine intervention of God in that For Archbishop Idahosa, God says what he means and means what he says. You believe that God can heal headache? How many of you believe that? Very easy. You believe that God can stop coffee. You believe that? Very easy. You believe that God can heal fever? Very easy. 
Most of the things you believe are not visible. Those things you believe are minor. A doctor like this can tell you it's a serious one. I've seen people killed by fever. I've seen someone die of headache. I've seen someone die of belly trouble. Every sickness, once it's called sick, it kills. It is in our hands that they are categorized into stages, standards, and strength. Igahosa believes that the proof of God's calling is the anointing which gives rise to signs, wonders, and miracles. So let me put it this way. How do you know a man is anointed? Okay. His face, his look, his action. When a man is vibrating in anger, you can tell. When you change it from the opposite side, the negative side, to the positive side, you can tell when a man is under the flame of the fire of the Holy Ghost. And so within your being, you can, you can feel either a divine heat, or an awesome awareness of the presence of God, it dislocates you from the human terrain to place you to a new area of ground altogether. And you can say, this is the presence of the Lord, and this is God's doing. Amen. You also, you are, by, by, if you also see a man laughing, I hope you can tell. Oh, sure. but how do you know a man is laughing? The countenance of his face, the vocal organ of his throat, the way he reacts, quah, 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 quah. Same thing. Anybody who is under, under expression through divine inspiration in the direction can also react in that form. And in Second King chapter one, verse ten, we are told. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of fifty. If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. And there came down, and there came down, and there came down, and there came down, fire from heaven, and consumed him and his people. Get up and shout hallelujah if you believe in the Bible. I say, if you believe in the Bible, stand to your feet and shout hallelujah. <laughs> if you believe that this is the word of God, shout hallelujah. <laughs> Pastor him, there's time to accept the insult. There is time when you don't know God. People say, your God is dead. If you don't know God, People can make jest of your God. Elijah said, not me. He said, God, if you are still there, and if I'm your man, and if you are my God, show it. Show it. Now, send fire from heaven. Consume the enemy of the gospel. Everybody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. He didn't say, if I sing in the choir. He didn't say, if I play the trumpet. He didn't say, if I'm a preacher. He didn't say, if I pay tithe. He didn't say, if I go to Tulsa. He didn't say if I go to Dallas. He didn't say if I'm a Sunday school teacher. He didn't say if I speak in tongues. He didn't say if I'm a good storyteller. He said, if I be a man of God. If I be a man of God. If I be a woman of God. 
if God is still alive, send down fire from heaven. You are my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. Leha here. Somebody help. Maya Alabama. Mokolomo. Bria Alabama. This is your night of deliverance. In Jesus' name of Nazareth, you foul spirit, leave her. Take your hand away. The blood of the Lamb of God set you free. Lose you from the chain of the enemy. And turn you from the part of the enemy to the part of God. to the sick who were carried forward. He spoke the words of life to them. Their faith was stirred for the healing miracle. Then, suddenly, something happened. The power of God came upon the sick. Powerful's most cynics is the daring courage with which Idahusi proclaims God's word. It is evident that he's propelled by God's unseen forces. When you are in the arena of faith manifesting and you are in what we call under divine inspiration, it can show you what is in this person, what is in this person, what is in this person. Just as doctor can, can diagnose a sickness out of the man. That's how the Spirit of God can reveal to you what is wrong in a person. And then whatever is wrong that is divinely inspired and told you by God can easily be known. And when you say it, it's exactly what you say, it's exactly what God revealed to you, and the action is taken with the result evident. If you, I was an apprentice, yes, I would be afraid. It, it's like a pilot. A pilot does not look at the weather, it looks at the radar. A preacher man doesn't look at you conditionally. He looks at what the Holy Spirit says, which is the most unusual event I've seen in our life. It was a, a crusade that took place, one of them in Guatemala, one of them in Colombia, and one of them in Venezuela. Uh, the one of uh, Colombia uh, is, is such an outstanding thing that 34 people got up from wheelchair one day. The state was full for wheelchairs and clutches. But the one I'm trying to bring to mind now is uh, the one that a demon-possessed person was shown to me by God, that that person had been loose from his physical handicap of madness. And I said, Lord, I don't know this person. They, they tied him down. You say he's free. I said, yes. In one minute, I will cause my glory to be upon his face so you can see what I've done. So I said, OK. You mental, demented person. You have been loose in the last one hour. Stand up and be clean. The whole crowd here because everybody knew he was down. Somebody rose up, you can see the glow of the glory of God upon his face. That man you saw in the film. But when the Lord said, turn your attention to that man, his broken neck at the heel. I called him and I said, come this way, brother. He came and I said, the Lord said he has healed. Shake your neck, take the band away. 
I was learning. Uh, I was it's a different thing. Like a pilot, you say, this rain that is falling now, are you going to put your head inside? The pilot is not using his head. He's using his training. He's using his skill. And he's not looking at the rain. He's looking at the radar. If the radar says the weather is clear. I've seen it uh, flying around the world temporarily. That uh, many times you can fly above the cloud and fly above the rain. Then you'll be on top of the rain. How does it happen? It's God's divine hand that has made the rain come below. Then the aircraft fly above. Same thing when you are in the spiritual realm. There are many things that God shows you that the natural eye cannot see. If you say it as God says, God gets glory out of it. When God is grooming you, He takes you through the tutelage of mistakes and errors. Mistakes and errors. But he ensures that when it's going to be a time of glorifying his name, he doesn't allow his glory to be given to the enemy by any defeat. So he tells you what not to say and tells you what to say. For example, if a lame man had been healed by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit says, tell him to rise and walk. He tells you to rise and walk. And you tell him to rise and walk. If you are not yet a master of your training, you say, supposing I, I tell him now he didn't get up. That fear within that instant will make the lame man remain forever dead. But when the urge is there, the, the spiritual, uh, uh, spontaneous uh, beating by the Holy Spirit, so say it now, the blind eyes open. I have seen that happen countless thousands of times. When you respond to the urge, the spur of the action of that moment, God comes. So your learning process is, don't say so, that is the flesh. Say it now. That is the spirit. It is that time you are doubting or believing when the two operate at the same time. You are still an apprentice. Once you are a, a, a prophet that God has endowed with wisdom and endued with power, he tells you what to utter instantaneously, simultaneously, the answer comes automatically. From Harare in Africa, Zimbabwe, to Latin America, Colombia, from Fiji Islands to Ibadan, Nigeria, from Lagos to Mexico, Archbishop Bitahus's message gives credence to God's word. In Matthew 28, he says, All power in heaven and on earth is given unto me. Go ye therefore. Take this power to your generation, therefore. Look at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and the sick shall recover. Yes. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why we brought you here, to give you a new hand to take home. How many of you would like to take new hand home? What will God have us do? We need to win our world. Jesus didn't say, go ye and sit down in your church and defend your denomination. No. Defend your doctrine. No. Get out of your doctrine and dogmatism. How many people can be saved by your denomination and your dogmatism? But take the gospel. <coughs> Cleanse the lepers. Heal the sick. Raise the dead. As I said yesterday, quietly, I chipped it in. Jesus took the bread. He had the ministry of distribution. What did God call you to do? If you still pray for the sick, take the power, pray for the sick. If you still bless the poor, pray for the poor. If you still raise the dead, raise the dead. Whatever you are in Christian family, there's power available for you or your generation. Peter was not as educated as many of you here. Matthew was not as educated as many of you here. They left legacy behind. And I want to say to you, don't only preach the message of prosperity, preach posterity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let your generation remember you lived. From Africa, from America, from Europe, from Pacific, from Latin America, from United States, let us take the power of the gospel. From the Caribbean, Dr. Addison, take the gospel back. 
telling the people the world is waiting for us they are sick and needy this is what god needs us to do not only to affect the, the poor and the needy affect those who have power in society the gospel of the kingdom is for everybody jesus was not only a friend to the poor and the sick he was a friend to joseph of arimathea nicodemus of the anglican church was his friend Zacchaeus, the richest man in the town was his friend and i'm glad to tell you today his power for you for your generation if you are not a plus to your generation if you are better you were not born if you become a minus if god can find one man in every nation in every nation in every nation male or female i began to think look at what god did from the time of abraham he served his generation the time of abel abel sacrificed for me abel died six thousand years ago today abel's name is still remembered his blood was shed and he cried from the ground and god said the offering got to me abel served his generation i began to think of several names like moses who was born and thrown to the river and the day Moses was thrown to the river was the day that God said to the princess of the man who wanted to kill him, go and have your bath in the river. Yeah. Moses that was being sorted for by the king and could not be found, lived in the king's house for 40 years. <laughs> and the king paid his mother and father to take care of him. <laughs> Child of destiny for his generation. Think of Moses and Joshua. Think of Joshua, what he did. Moses did all he knew to do to take the children of Israel out of the land of bondage. He took them out. Joshua took them in for their generation. I think of a man like Ezekiel whom God told, in your time, dry bones will live again. In your time. In your time. In your time. In your time. We may not all have the same ministry but we can have a ministry. Yeah. If, you are, if you have the ministry of having a school, the ministry of establishing churches, the ministry of praying for the sick, the ministry of helping the preachers like doctors. In every generation. In every nation. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you.
used to help us, God will find another way. But this is your generation, and your nation is in trouble. What are you going to do? Esther rose up and said, my time, my people will not perish. What did she say? If I perish, not my people, I perish for my people to be alive in every generation. I began to list people like Elijah, the prophet of fire, Elisha, the prophet that met God, who first reigned to fall. For their generation, a proof that God is not dead. Paul the apostle, John the Baptist, the introducer, who said, I'm a voice for my generation. He that cometh after me is greater than I am. For the little that I am. And Jesus said, even though John was a humble Baptist preacher, of all men born of women, none is like John. He served his generation. He didn't build cathedral. He didn't build schools. He introduced Jesus. He served his generation. The power of God for your generation is more than hopping here and hopping there and falling on the ground. When Bishop Reed said 32 years ago, I laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. I so laugh. I say, Oh God, those who are introducing laughing now must be sucking at that time. When he started laughing, I didn't know you were the one who introduced laughing ministry. <laughs> but think of a man like Isaac. Think of a man like David who killed Goliath. When the nation was faced with shame through that giant. And David was brought from forest to take the reproach out of the children of God's head. He saved his generation. I began to list out people like Elizabeth, who encouraged Mary, even though you are alive, that you are pregnant without a husband. I was a victim of barrenness. But a child in my womb have lifted, and great joy has come to my house because of your visitation. Elizabeth served his generation. The four Marys served their generation. Then look at all the great men of the New Testament. Stephen served his generation. All that are written in the Bible who met the need of your generation. And as the days of those ones expired, from 1947 to date, people like T.L. Osborne, people like Ora Robert, people like Billy Graham, people like Yonggi Cho, who are still alive, have said their generation. Yeah. I was reading T.L. Osborne's book this afternoon, six weeks last year in Russia. Over 70 years old, he's serving his generation. I think of Bishop El Pork, 60 years and more preaching, putting his time of no business and time of knowledge, serving God for over 60 years. Oh, as I began to name them, I said, Lord, look at that Bishop Idahosa, a man sent to his own generation. What would have you done if, if? 50 men came to your house in Orlando and you know they came to kill you. You know what some of you would have done? <laughs> Pastor Benny When was the last time you reacted to the attack of the enemy? When was the last time you rebelled against evil? When was the last time you said, Headache, if I be a man of God, leave me. Poverty, if I be a man of God, out and prosperity in. If I be a man of God, that's 
what I'm here for tonight. To get the men and women of God who want to do miracles. In the name of God. Amen. Jesus has not changed. The power of God has not changed. Salvation has not changed. The blood of Jesus, God's own son, is still available for miracles. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. I went to my pastor. I said, Pastor. Did you say Jesus said, I can cast out devils? He said yes. Everybody say yes. yes. Can I heal the sick? Yes. Can I cleanse the lepers? Yes. Can I raise the dead? Yes. yes. Oh my God. Everybody shout hallelujah. Heal the sick. Yes. Shout, cleanse the leper. Yes. Shout, raise the dead. Yes. I said, Pastor, that's good for me. <laughs> I said, Have you done it? He said, No. <laughs> I said, Can I do it? He said, What? Yes. What? Yes. Can I do it? Yes. Can you do it? Do you want to do it? Yes. Everybody say yes. yes. I can say I was young, but now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken. No, he sits begging for bread. How many can say amen to that? trouble that God will give to you at 75 years old. May he give it to you when you are 25. Because the time of old age is a time of relaxation. People ask me in Nigeria every time, how are you able to handle criticism? I say, because I died. A dead man doesn't reply. Many of you are replying because you are not dead yet. Paul said, it's no longer I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. Somebody say, hallelujah. <laughs> he touched me another time. I lost my strength, but he brought his hand again. Then there came, give me the microphone, let him read it with American English. Verse 18. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. What did God do when he meets you on the floor? I say, what do God do when he meets you on the ground? You mean he doesn't press you and say, are you still living? What does he do? I say, what does God do? Then what does he say to you? Get up and do what? Do One more time, get up yeah. and do get up yeah. and do every child of God. Get up. And the whole world turned against God. When the whole world lived in utter confusion and know not what to do, the Holy Spirit told me, tell your hearers, if the world break down, the saints should break forth for joy. Because the condition of hell is going to grow worse for the worldly. 
Only those in Christ will be happier every day because they are going to learn more to anchor on God and say, God, I used to make this job my God. I have found out that my employer is in trouble. If my employer is in trouble, I am in trouble too. Therefore, if my employer is complaining, I'm supposed to complain. But now that I have God, I learn to lean on God, and God become my source. So God gave me a message that I do not want to jump up and down to preach it tonight. I don't want to roll on the floor. But just in case you are one of those who came here for healing, while I preach tonight, take your healing there. I saw Dr. Reed ask you, how many of you are here for miracles? I saw many hands. I also saw him ask, how many of you want joy tonight? And I want to ask that question. How many of you want joy? Keep your hand up if you want joy. How many of you want victory? My God. Thank God for you. Only me. I don't want victory tonight. I don't want joy. Ask me why. why? I didn't hear you. Why? I have too much. <laughs> you don't look for what you have. You don't go out searching for joy. When the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. You don't go looking for healing when you are well. You do not go about. Asking for victory when you are already more than conqueror. I have to teach our choir a song to sing. We used to sing in the choir with tears in our eyes. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench the thirst of my soul. We will sing it and cry and cry. And one day the Lord asked me, Do you need a glass of water? <laughs> giving you a ministry to go around the world. How many people can you bath with this one? If I fill it up for you. And he said, turn to your Bible to John chapter 7. Don't read it. And I said, yes, Lord. And when I got there, I saw where the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And God said, how do you have river? And I apply for a cup. <laughs> Did you hear what I'm saying? How can you be carrying millions of gallons of water and drums and carrying rivers within you and coming to the church in tears to beg me to fill your cup? And he said, draw out of what you have. You can bless your generation. Amen. Then I thanked him for showing me that. And that night when the prayer really went serious, I began to sing. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. How many of you have sang that song before? You love it? Yes. Say yes. yes. I know. I'm going to catch you. <laughs> and the Lord says, son, you have little light. I said yes. He said, I thought you are the light of the world. How can you be light of the world and be a little light? So I remove, fill my cup. I remove this little light of mine. Then one song I love most. Tell the whole world and give me Jesus. Tell the whole world and give me Jesus. And he said, the only property you have, you are telling the world to come and take from you. The world already has the world with them. And the only thing you have as my servant is me. So asking the world to give me to you. 
when I sent you to go and give me to them. <laughs> One thing critics hold against Pentecostals in general is the commercialization of the ministry. But as much as an excellent spirit, somebody say excellent. Excellent. And let me say this to you from my background of salvation. Anything that everybody doubts that you are doing is not correct. Do you hear me? If the way I'm praying, he comes to me in love, or even in hatred, every day I will hear Mr. Mokoko or Adeboye, shall live my attitude on TV, whether by narrow pareto. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. If you say there are men that used to be president of our organization, today they are no more preachers of the true gospel. I will close my eyes. I believe this message is blessing you. Please visit and share videos on anointedtube.com, the world database of Christian preachers, to help us reach 100 million people. The message continues after this video about Anointed Tube. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures, click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Sentences. Are you hearing me? Listen to the next one. 
objective scientific test. When Dr. Ida Hoser prayed for you, what did you feel? I felt a warmth going through. I felt hands on my head and warmth going through. And within about 10 seconds he said, done. And I looked for him. I felt dazed. And um, I thought, if, he, if I'm healed, yes, the one thing that God knows that I can't do is to twist. Twist from side to side. And Dr. Benson said, excuse me, madam, do this from side to side and I could do it instantly. Mm. Huh? You could only slide before. Now slant. Go. 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 Now. Is this you? <laughs> you can't believe it? I was so relieved, I started crying. You see, why are you crying? It was just from relief. So, so, see, without oh, you know this is you? Um, five seconds, it was marvelous. Can you believe yourself? Yeah. Why are you crying? Kora mahapo soyoto. Sila baba hakaha. Losarobo, new spine, new bone. To every area that was destroyed, new body. Resurrection to your body. And we thank you, Lord, for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Ah. You know, you can come up to... Wonderful all day. Well, since last night, That's since I got home. Is your wife now? Yeah. John, yeah. <laughs> I was a little bit afraid at first last night. You know, I didn't really want to come in the end. I suppose it was the devil making me fight against it, but I decided to come in the end and I was healed. Okay. After 25 years, um, osteoarthritis. And it was, um, my leg was going numb. I had terrible pain in my foot. And my arm was affected as well. And all down this other leg was starting as well. 
And the doctor said that unless I had an operation, that he couldn't do anything. I know she's had this pain for, for about 25 years. We've been married 15 years, and since we've been married, she's never been able to do the things she does now. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the homepage and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Idausa is my father. My first encounter with uh, Archbishop Idausa, he was doing a big crusade uh, in the center of Accra, which is called Circle. He said, if your faith say yes, God cannot say no. Idausa is a man that believe with God all things are possible. He had an unwavering faith. He had an unshaking faith. He had an unbreaking faith. He had faith in God. He saw God as he's talking to a faithful father. He saw God like his son will see a father who he trusts that is faithful. Whatever I ask my daddy to do, he will do it. That was Idausa's level of faith, beyond man's uh, explanation. He had faith. Spiritual a person, yet he was so human in nature. A man who reached out to everyone, the high, and the law in society. A man who rubs shoulders with presidents and the highest 
of dignitaries you can think of in society. I feel very blessed because the Lord has called me to preach the word of God in Africa and particularly in Nigeria. And I've been here with my husband 40 years now. It's a blessing. And it's particularly been a blessing to work with Papa Idahosa and Mama Idahosa. When you talk about legacy, I remember traveling with Archbishop Idahosa to Kaduna for the consecration of Bishop Oyudepo. I think it's Faith Liberation Chapel. I remember it as if it is today. And the Archbishop said, we are going. And when we got to Benin Airport, uh, Okada, uh, that's chief, Igbinidion had given him an aircraft. So we flew from Benin City Airport to Kaduna. And I carried, and it was there he told me in the preach, he said, this is my son. At the point, at that time, I didn't really know Bishop Edipo. This must have been early in the 80s or something. And then many, a couple of weeks after, Bishop Edipo came to Church of God Mission Sunday evening service. And I remember the first message he preached. It was on the prodigal son. The man brought me out from the dungeon. Papa Idahosa was, he was a man full of energy and vision. Uh, he, he, he was always getting, moving on from one project to another. And often when he started a new project, we whites, we Oibos would say, why is he doing that? We couldn't see the vision at all. We thought, hmm, this is very funny. But then sometime later we would realize, oh yes, okay, I see why he's done that now. And I was a Muslim that I gave my life to Christ. In Ghana, there was this kind of freedom of worship. There were a lot of Muslims. And among those people that by the grace of God, I gave my life to Christ. And I wanted to go to Bible school when I felt the call of God upon my life. And unfortunately for me, at that particular time, with the Assemblies of God Ghana, there was no space for women to go to Bible school. So my pastor called me and said, he wants me to go to Nigeria and meet with Indahosa because there is a room in that particular ministry for women. And I traveled to Nigeria by the grace of God. On getting there, I met with the Archbishop, my first time of meeting the Archbishop in Dahosa of Church of God Mission International. What an awesome privilege it was to see this man of faith and boldness. I will never forget the Onicha Crusade. At that time, the head of state in Nigeria had passed the law that nobody should do open air crusades. And Archbishop said he went to pray and said, God, God, what they are saying, and God asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to do crusade. God said, go ahead and do your crusade. So he sent us, I was part of the uh, advanced team, to go and paste posters all over Odicha. And we went to put posters all over Odicha. And the first day of the crusade, a truckload of soldiers came. The man of faith, the man of prayer, the man of courage, the man of peace. And Archbishop mounted the platform. And, and the soldiers came with their guns. When Archbishop started preaching, they all put their guns down. When he made the altar call, they all raised their hands to receive Jesus as Lord and personal Savior. And we stood there and the whole crusade was an eye-opener for us. And right there, I decided I needed to go and know more from this man. Fortunately, he was offering scholarship for people who want to attend Bible school in Benin, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute. And so that particular year, I uh, requested, I wrote, and fortunately, I was invited to come. So uh, we went to Nigeria to begin. Uh, my class, Actually, I went there in 79. My class started in 1980. And uh, we went through the Bible training, and it was powerful. We were all charged up. He started uh, the Word of Faith schools. He started the Christian Hospital, Faith Mediplex. 
He started Benson Lederhose University, all those. And well, he's, he's a man we can't, we can't forget. He was a great example to us. And I thank God. It's particularly good for us, whites, British, because in Britain, uh, people are rather skeptical these days. You'll not find many people who are really born again Christians. Um, people of faith are few in Britain, but if we can come here and our faith can be uh, increased, can be inspired, particularly by the things that Papa did, we are blessed. Let me share this. And I think for those who were around in Church of God Mission at that time, we traveled to Washington for Jesus. John Geminis went to Baltimore, flew to New York, and then flew to Lagos on Nigeria with 11 hours. And then we took Okada from Okada Air from Lagos to Benin City. It was bad weather. Brother, it was one turbulence I, I told God, as long as I'm alive, never let me face anything like this again in my travel. I'm sure Dausa and the wife Margaret were in the first class, which is only divided by a curtain because it's a 90 seater plane. And we took off from Lagos to Benin. It was bad weather, raining cats and dogs. We rented a storm. There were Filipino pilots. And then they said that he has lost contact. The pilot said, listen, he has lost contact with Lagos. And so he doesn't know where he is. That is ridiculous. You are supposed to be taking us to Benin. So if you, the pilot, has lost contact and you don't know where you are and it's raining cats and dogs, what do you want us to do? And when I looked through the wood, brother, I was sitting at the edge of my seat like this. I was shaking in my boots. I'd never been scared like that. I thought I was, I, it, it was a life and death situation. The plane will lose, dive, turn left, turn right. When I looked through the curtain, I was looking at the reaction of the Archbishop Idausa. We said, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then one time he stood up in the aircraft. He lifted his hand. I will never forget. He said, God, this is what he said. God, you called me and you didn't say I would die in a plane crash. My mission is not finished. My assignment is not over. We call the enemy to order and command the devil to back off. Now you pilot, you better find out where you are and take us to our destination in the name of Jesus. And he sat down. Five minutes time, the pilot said, he has made contact with Port Harcourt. Listen to this. We are supposed to be doing 30 minutes from Lagos to Benin. And the pilot, we, we landed in Port Harcourt. So we, were the, we have lost our way. We would have ended up in the sea. I will never forget. We landed in Lagos. It was still raining. That is where the testimony is. Mama, I was there, you can ask her. I told Papa, can I please go for bus? Because I was afraid, can we get a bus so we go to Benin? He said, no. James, you don't travel like I do. I must conquer the devil today in the air. I said, what is this? <laughs> I was scared. I said, Papa, you want us to die? He said, James, if I don't conquer the devil, I will not be able to travel by air. Okada gave us his gold-plated aircraft. Chief Benedion, he called him. The plane rolled out from the hangar and we went by air to Benin. And that Sunday evening, he made me go to church and give a testimony. He said, Ghana boy. He calls me Ghana boy. I came and said, give them your testimony. You coward. <laughs> Another powerful miracle was when the witches in the whole world decided to come and have a meeting in Benin City. And Archbishop said, not when he's here. There won't be any such meeting. The chief priest then was summoned. His name, Chief Ebohon, because he was a representative of the witches then. And he said, the meeting, nobody, not even God could stop the witches from meeting. Then daddy said, or papa said, Yes, God will not waste his time to stop you because I'm here to stop you. God has put me here to stop you. And guess what? That meeting never took place in Benin City. 
when you are with him one on one, you will feel an aura that defies definition. You know, it's as if you are in the presence of God, of a deity, of something that is beyond where you are. You know, uh, he never celebrated mediocrity. He never took no for an answer. He dared to go where nobody wants to go or everybody feared to go. He was a man that believed in venturing where others fear to venture. He was a trailblazer. I remember those days, for example, this television ministry that's becoming anything today. He does have started it in 1974-75. I'm honored to have been one of his sons. And uh, by the grace of God, I think that um, that sign, wonder, anointing, and his boldness. I, was, I did a meeting for Dr. Maurice Serrillo in 2010. And just before I spoke in his world conference, they said, uh, oh, miracles don't happen in America because they have a lot of doctors. It happens in the third world. Well, when I took the microphone, I just shared my testimony. 23 cripples gave me the Aztecs and began to walk. Um, that kind of boldness to decree and declare, I took it from the late Archbishop. I believe in the transference of spirits. And I believe strongly, like God told Moses, I will take off the spirit that is upon you and I will put it upon the 70. I'm one of the people who took of that spirit of signs and wonders from the Archbishop. Making a movie of the Archbishop will really, really help the next generation. Because the young preachers and the young ministers that are coming up have no clue of who he was. It, I mean, he will still be preaching and cripples will start walking. Um, that was an awesome man of faith. I remember whilst we were in school, he went to visit and it was shown on TV. Um, he went to visit Kenneth Copeland and when he got there, they, he was supposed to have gone the previous day, but he arrived late. So they announced, when they announced that the Archbishop Dahosa has arrived, six cripples got out of their wheelchairs. That is how anointed uh, Papa was. We must keep his legacy alive. Idahosa is dead to some people, but to us, to me, Idahosa lives. Hello, I am Bishop Margaret Benson Idahosa, the wife of the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa that did wonders while he was on earth here. Early in the morning when I rise, I will lift up my eyes. Now let me let you know how I got to meet him. You know, in those early years, he used to ride his bicycle with some trucks going from street to street and one of it was my street. And every time he comes, we call him pastor. Pastor, he was young then, about 21 or 22. He was very, very young, but he didn't mind. He was not ashamed of the gospel because he knew that that was the power of God in his life. And one of these days, he was riding past, and people were crying in my house. What's up? What's up? And he just stopped, brought his 
brought his uh, small little Bible out and came in, just uh, uh, waded through the crowd. And he came and I said, Pastor, please, today is not like any other day. Somebody just died. <laughs> and he said, ah, I have been riding my bicycle all through. Till this time it was about four o'clock. And I want to raise somebody. I say, hey, please, I beg you. Don't don't make a mockery of your God. He said, No, 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 no. I want to wake him up because God has told me in the book. Then he opened the book and read it that uh, uh, behold, I have given you power to tread upon serpent, to tread upon scorpions and to raise the dead and i said listen don't make a mockery of yourself the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal that sin raise the dead i said what Benson, you mean what you say that we can raise dead person? Yes, absolutely. Have you raised dead person before? Um, no. Why? But you say I can do it. Yes. In the name of Jesus. Hey. He said, no, 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 come and show me where the baby was. So I said, okay. I took him to the room where the baby was lying. It, it was she. She was about uh, three years old, three or four, four years old then. And I said, "Listen, this baby died at about nine, and it's about four o'clock now. The baby is already changing color. The fa why why he why she was not being buried at this time is that the father has to go to the secretariat to get a death certificate." And he said, oh, there's no need for that now. Let's do it. Let's do it. I said, how? How are you going to do it? And he said, okay, go out if you don't want to see, see me do it. But, uh, you know, as a stubborn child, then I stood, at the, I stood at the door. I stood at the door with my back laid at the door. One, one eye on this side and one eye on the front door. And he prayed. Early in the morning when I rise. Child. Be healed. I will bring to you an offering. After he prayed, he asked me, What is the name of the child? I send it to your throne. What's in the girl name? I will send it to the I said it's in Warata. I'm a living testimony. I give God the glory for keep counting me among the living today. I'm a testimony that the whole world know about through my father, late Ben Sinidahosa. I was sick about two weeks. After the sick, conversion hold me. So I, I, I died. When I died, they kept me inside one room. So my people was crying, weeping. About two hours, a bit three hours later, my father come, my late Benson the outside. He said, what is happening? They told him that her daughter, their daughter has lost. They said, what happened to her? He said, she was confused. So they tried the, in the ordinary native daughter tried, they can't raise her back to life. He said, where is her now? He said, she swam in there. He said, he asked my father the question. He said, daddy, do you believe that the God I serve can raise him come back to life. My father had said yes. So he said they should take him to the room. Then take him to where yeah, they, they lie me down. So carry me, they were praying with some of members. As they pray, the God that answered by fire, hear their prayer. I come back to life. 
Aleluya. Aleluya. That is how I'm a living soul today. And he just stretched his Bible and himself on that child and said, Inuata, I command you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that has empowered me to raise the dead. Now, come back to life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Inuata, I command you, rise up! I was just peeping. And all of a sudden, the, the child that died at about 9 o'clock slays. My mother looked dead to me after a year and three months in the womb. So, my mother passed through many tribulations before she gave back to me. Many said, maybe I'm not a baby, I'm a wood, I'm this, but for God be thy glory. When they gave back to me, I'm, I'm a human being. And after they gave back to me, the devil, the useless man, raised up his ugly head to take my soul away. Do you know I took to my heels? I couldn't stand, I couldn't wait, and I ran out. <laughs> with him to the mother. He said, please give this child something to eat. And everybody was surprised. Everyone was shocked. Ah, and he just left. And when he left, I, I sat down and I was thinking, what is the thing that made this man to raise this child from the dead? There must be power. Super power. Then I wasn't a child of God. My mother used to serve, um, she was a princess of Olokun, Shango, and all that. And I said, mm, the, the, the power that raised this child from the dead must be a power that surpasses the power of these graven images that has no power. So the father just came and we started celebrating, but he was gone. But in the night I sat and I, I started praying and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, just touch me. I have been hearing messages of salvation from here and there. Even the church I, 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 I used to go then, but I just knelt down and I said, Father, let Jesus come into my heart right now. And I need to know this power that raised this child. And that was all I prayed. I didn't know how to pray salvation prayer. But I just knelt and I said, Father, please, if you were the one that raised this child up, let come into my life and let me act and walk and believe like us. That young man that we call pastor believed, and he did this. And you know, when I finished prayers, there was an abundant joy, unspeakable joy in my spirit. And the following day, uh, we, we used to call him Brother Benson. He came and said, where is the child? You said the child is there. And I called him to the room and I said, you know what I did last night? I didn't know. Uh, I, I don't know how to do it, but I just knelt by my bedside and I said, God, if you were the one that raised that child up, let me have a part of that power. I said, ah, you have done it. And I knelt down, he prayed, and I, and I said the, the sinner's prayer, and that was what got me into where I am now. And I'm glad. Okay, because I'm still alive, my father Benson Dalsa is still alive because I'm a living testimony. I'm glad that I, 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 I'm doing what I'm doing now because there was sign, there was wonder, there, were, there, there was miracle that got into my heart. Thank God for today I'm alive. 
I have about eight children, two guys and two boys and six guys. He was a man that did everything by faith. I have about ten grandchildren to the glory of God. Now I understand the, the type of joy. The Bible said that the joy that no man can give, that is the joy that Jesus gives when you give your life to him. You can watch and listen to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. to great and powerful messages from different men and women of God, preachers, prophets, teachers from all around the world on www.anointedtube.com. Hey there, this is Anointed Tube. Anointed Tube is blessing and changing lives around the world. We are a data hive of videos by preachers, gospel ministers, motivational and financial speakers from around the world. We need your help and monthly donation by clicking on the donate subscription button on the home page and also on the video page. You choose the amount you want to donate monthly. Nothing is too small or too big. We are targeting 5,000 people to subscribe now and we need your help. It is remarkably easy to navigate on the site. Simply click on the photos of any preachers of your choice in Africa, America or elsewhere shown at the top of the site. Scroll down to see the preachers pictures. Click on any of the pictures to start watching and catching up with videos from your favorite ministers. Videos can be shared on all social media platforms. We need your help now. Thank you. 
Thank you for taking the time to watch this powerful video of Archbishop Benson Indaosa. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was a charismatic Pentecostal preacher. He is the founder of Church of God Mission International. Archbishop Benson Indaosa was popularly referred to as the father of Pentecostalism in Nigeria. And I would like you to know that he was also my spiritual father please do not forget to share this video to bless all the people let this video go viral remain blessed hello this video is about Archbishop Bensi Idaosa his early Christian ministry testimony as a young Christian, I once heard my pastor say during a morning service that Christians could raise the dead in the name of the Lord Jesus. I believe it with my, all my heart. And flying around on my bicycle in those days, I went through the city of Benin in Nigeria in search of a dead person to raise to life. After five hours of hard searching, I found a compound where a little girl had died a few hours before. The corpse had been cleaned and prepared for burial. I walked boldly to the father of the child. The God whom I serve can bring your baby back to life. I told him, will you permit me to pray for the child and bring her back to life? The man was startled, but he agreed. I walked into the room and up to the bed. The child was cold and dead. With strong faith in the Lord, I called on the Lord to restore the child back to life. I turned to the corpse and called it by name. Arise in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, glory to God. The corpse sneezed heavily. Alas, the child had come back to life. God is Bensi Indaosa. Now, Bensi Indaosa childhood. Bensi Indaosa was born in Benin City on September 11, 1938. To a pagan parents. He was a sickly infant who was always fainting. As a result of his constant illness, his father ordered the mother to throw him in the dustbin. When he was 18, year, 18 months old, he was left on a rubbish heap to die. He was rejected by his father, sent to work on the farm as a servant, and was denied education until he was 14 years old. His education was irregular due to the poor financial status of his parents. He later took correspondence course from Britain and United States while working in Bada Shoe Company. His conversion and call to ministry. His conversion was drastic and his calling supernatural. He was converted by Pastor Akos on a football field on one Sunday afternoon while playing soccer with his teammates. Thus, young, ben young Benson became the first Benin member of Pastor Akbar's small congregation. As a young convert, he became very zealous in winning souls and in conducting outreaches in villages around Benin City. He was called to the ministry in a night vision from the Lord. I have called you that you might take the gospel around the world in my name, preach the gospel, and I will confirm my words with signs following said the voice from heaven the room was filled with the presence of god as benson fell to his knees before the lord wherever you want me to go i will go he prayed through the night renewing his vows to god and interceding for his people who were yet to hear the message of salvation after his call benson launched into ministry work preaching from village to village the gospel of, the, of, of Jesus Christ with great power and anointing. More people confess Christ as their Savior and more healings occur as he prayed for the sick. Expansion of his ministry and his credentials. Archbishop Benson Daosa, the Archbishop himself and the founder of Church of God Mission International Incorporated with his headquarters in Benin City, Nigeria, established over 6,000 churches throughout Nigeria, Ghana before 90, 
1971. Many of the ministers he supervised pastored churches of 1,000 to 4,000 people. In addition to filling the position of Archbishop of Church of God Mission, he also he, he was also president of All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, president of Idaosa World Outreach, and president of Faith Medical Center. He had positions in numerous organizations, including the College of Bishop, or Bishop of the International Communion of Christian Churches and the Ora Robot uh, University in Oklahoma. He also earned a diploma in divinity from Christ for the Nation Institute in Dallas, Texas, which he attended in 1971, a doctorate of divinity in 1981 from the World Faith College, New Orleans, and a Doctor of Law degree from Ora Robot University in March 1984. He also received another degree, he also received other degrees from the International University in Brussels, Belgium. Archbishop Benson and his wife, Margaret Idaosa, were blessed with four children. Idaosa Supreme so winning was in Daosa primary consign with a motto evangelism our supreme tax. He worked towards his goal of reaching the origin Nigeria, Africa and the rest of the world with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. As a black African, he found the doors of African countries were wide open and he ministered in over 133 countries all 123 countries all over the world. Crusade played a major role in his ministry. He was involved at least one crusade per month. A record crowd of nearly one million people a night attended his Lagos crusade in April 1985. He established the Redemption Television Ministry with a potential viewing audience of 15 million people. What leading gospel minister said about Archbishop Idaosa? According to Mrs. Gordon, Frada Lisser, President of Christ for the Nation Incorporated, Dallas, Texas, USA. I know of no young black in all Africa who is preaching, who is reaching million as Benson is in crusade with hundreds of thousands in attendance in, in, in his weekly nationwide telecast, in his Bible school, training eager students from several nations. He also conducted campaigns in Sweden, Singapore, Malaysia, Korea, Australia, and United States, where he often appeared on national religious telecast. His body for souls, his ministry of healing and miracles, even to the raising of several dead, demonstrate he is especially core of the Lord in this end time. Dr. Ben Akosa remarked, Benson Daosa is sought after by everyone in the state, from government officials to beggars. When they pose questions and explain their problem to this man, they receive instantaneous miracle solution, just as the people did in Bible days with God's prophet. The people got miraculous answer from, his, from this mighty leader of God's people said Daniel Oris. Benin City respect and salute this great man of God even at his death. I have been with him on visit to many officials, to the governor, to the powerful Benin tribal kings. He moved with God and his people knows it. His great miracle cathedral, his headquarters sit over 10,000 in 1981, his Bible school attract upper class people from different African nations and also come from Maurice, India, uh, Pakistan, Sri Lanka, Indonesia, Singapore, Philippines, Hong Kong, Japan, Korea, the Middle East, Europe and other nations of the world. A truly international Bible training center of dynamic faith. People know that Bishop Idaosa preached what he practiced. Dr. Idaosa's evangelistic ministry has reached nations around the world. 
He was the first Af black African evangelist to shake Australia in a massive crusade that got national attention. His seminars have affected Christians and church leaders in many countries. I sincerely salute this man because he practiced among his own people what he preached to the world. Bensi Indaosa was a man who believed God's promises and that God's miracle provision applies to Africans as well as to Americans. He believed that Africa has a part in God's work and Africa will reap God's blessing. Evangelist T. S. Bond from Tulsa, Oklahoma remarked, Many who followed Idaosa's teaching have been saved from poverty and have learned to plant out of their des have learned how to plant out of their desperate need and to look to God as their divine source, thereby becoming prosperous Christians in their own land. It also rose from the rank of an ordinary man to a world leader's leadership as a pastor, a builder, a counselor, a prophet, a teacher, uh, an apostle, an evangelist, a man of godly wisdom and of Christ-like compassion which ministry has blessed million, millions the world over. Idaosa was the greatest African ambassador of the apostolic Christian faith to the world. The secret of his success. Idaosa operated in faith. He had a robust faith. He believed and trusted God with a childlike faith. He once said that living a daily life of absolute faith in God is the only secret to great success. He believed God for everything. All things are possible to him that believes. He spent quality times in prayer and in the study of God's word. He said that if someone spent time studying the Bible and acting on it, people will come looking for that person for life solutions. He also, also spent time studying the works and the lives of other successful people both in the gospel ministry and other fate of human endeavors and he applied the principles he learned he learned from these successful people to his life and ministry he was very energetic hard working one of the ministers who served under him said that he had never seen a man who worked as hard as Archbishop Benson Daosa he was committed and consistent and he had confidence in himself he was very humble and full of godly wisdom Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was said to be the leader of over 7 million Jesus people worldwide before he went to be with the Lord in February 1998 now I'm going to talk about his early ministry again as a youth, he got converted to Christianity by a certain pastor at Paul and joined the flagging congregation as one of the first members. He was very active and converted many to Christianity. After experiencing a revelation from God, calling him into ministry, he began to conduct outreaches from village to village before establishing his church in a store in Benin City. Archbishop Bensi Idaosa was well known for many notable quotable quotes, including, My God is not a poor God. Your attitude determines your, your attitude determines your attitude. It is more risky not to take risk. I am a possibilitarian. A big head without a big brain is a big load to the neck. If your faith says yes, God cannot say no. Among others, many of these messages on faith, miracle, and prosperity remain a classic among Pentecostal. He had strong links with international gospel ministers like Billy Graham, T.L.S. Bond, Kenneth Hagin, Penny Inn, Ryan Bonke, Maurice Cerullo, Ora Robert, amongst others, and took the gospel to 145 nations in his lifetime. At the time of his death in 1998, he had preached to more white than any black man and to more black than any white man. 
His desire to meet the need of the total man led him to establish several other arms of the ministry apart from the church. They include Faith, Metaplex, All Nation for Christ Bible Institute, World of Faith, Group of School, Bensi Indaosa University, which is currently under leadership of a son, Reverend E. F. B. Uh, Idaosa. His wife, Margaret uh, Idaosa, is the current Archbishop of the Church. It was used by God to perform many miracles, including healing the blinds, raising up 28 people from the dead at different times in his ministry. You must understand this powerful man of God that God used to affect the nation of the world. And I'm glad and privileged that he was my father in the Lord. I am honored to be a part of his anointing, a part of his, of his ministry. I want to ask you, please make sure you share these videos, this video, this particular video to bless all the people and make sure you have enough time to visit Anointed Tube, support Anointed Tube and let people all over the world around you, your village, your town, your city, your colleagues, your family, your friends, all your contact get to know about Anointed Tube. So thank you for taking the time to listen to this or, or watch this video. I believe that um, your life can never remain the same because God's servant was such a powerful, powerful, humble, great man of God that God used before he was called to be with him. I, and I'll say it again, I am grateful and I'm privileged to be a son to Archbishop Bensi in the house. The Lord bless you.